With Armored Core 6 releasing, I wanted to do a video on another game series focused on mechs and warfare. That series is Mech Warrior. But you may read this video's title and be like, wait, that franchise isn't dead. And you'd be right, but my question remains the same. What happened to Mech Warrior? What happened to this franchise? Because it's not what it used to be. It used to be something better. In 1989, Mech Warrior was released on Microsoft DOS and was later released in 1993 on the SNES. This game was developed by Dynamax and published by Activision. They've certainly been around a while. The story involves a Mech Warrior named Gideon Braver Vandenberg, who is apparently European and whose family is also killed. He creates a group of Mech Warriors and seeks revenge on the people who killed his family. This will be a common theme in these games. The gameplay included what would become staples of the series, such as taking on contracts, repairing mechs, selling and buying mechs, and it even had a reputation system. Combat involves fighting other mechs in first person, and is also the foundation of what the combat will become in the sequels to this game. Next is MechWarrior 2 31st Century Combat. It originally released in 1995 for PC, 1996 for Mac, and 1997 for PlayStation 1 and the Sega Saturn. Activision is once again the publisher, but also the developer this time around. The graphical overhaul compared to the first game is obvious. For the story, you can actually decide what clan you want to join in the beginning. Depending on the clan you choose, you actually get specific cutscenes to that clan. As far as gameplay, everything is enhanced in many ways, such as having squad mates and the mech lab allowing players to tinker with their mechs in specific ways, such as customizing weapons, armor, etc. Fun fact, on Windows 95 it includes software that allows people to actually battle against one another on the same network. After MechWarrior 2, Ghost Bears Legacy released in 1995 on PC, which is an expansion pack for the game. Following that, MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries released in 1996 on PC. Mercenaries was a standalone expansion with an iconic opening scene and ending, as well as a beast of a soundtrack. It is the 31st century and mankind is once again at war. MechWarrior 3 released in 1999, but this time it was only released on PC. This game was developed by Zipper Interactive and published by Hasbro Interactive, so at this point Activision is no longer in the picture. <laughs> once again, the graphical leap between MechWarrior 2 and 3 is substantial. Here, like in other games, you can savage downed mechs and parts after missions, as well as customize your mech. However, what really differentiates this title from other MechWarrior games that came before it and after it is that the amount of customization you can do to mechs is simply astounding. The story here is a lot more in your face than previous games, with briefings before each mission actually being the standouts of this game, as these were done ridiculously well. As for the story itself, you're making your way through Planet Tranquil in order to destroy Clan Smoke Jaguar installations and forces. MechWarrior 3 also had an expansion pack called Pirate's Moon, which released in 1999 as well. It was a new story with 20 missions and new mechs. You can choose between two campaigns, one playing as the same protagonist in MechWarrior 3, and another campaign as a pirate. <laughs> Moving on, we have MechWarrior 4 Vengeance, which released in 2000 and was developed by FASA Interactive and published by Microsoft. The story follows a MechWarrior named Ian, who's part of a royal family. You guessed it, the royal family is murdered, and he must seek his revenge against William Drasari, his cousin who betrayed his family to take the throne. Gameplay is mostly the same as MechWarrior 3, and many weapons are familiar, though there are some new ones. The campaign has 26 missions for you to play through. One major difference between MechWarrior 3 and 4 is that unfortunately the customization is much more restricted in 4. As far as other features to the game, there's an instant action mode where you can fight mechs whenever you want, and there's also a multiplayer mode. MechWarrior 4 also had two expansion packs, Black Knight, releasing in 2001, and Mercenaries, releasing in 2002. Next, as a quick note, in 2009, MechWarrior Living Legends was released. Though this was a fan-made game, it's still an important entry in the series. A lot, and I mean a lot, of fans love this game. 
Then 2013 came, and it was the beginning of the end in many ways. MechWarrior Online was released, developed by a studio called Piranha Games. At first glance, it seemed awesome. Though it was only multiplayer, it did have a lot right for a MechWarrior game. Collaborating with other players was fun, and if teams both had a good strategy, it could become a fun and intense match. For the time, the graphics were also great, with good combat as well. So what went wrong? In my opinion, things got stale after a while. There wasn't really any substantial or meaningful updates. I would slowly hop on less over time, and then one day, near Christmas one year, I hopped on and saw a nice, beautiful gold skin for my mech that I could buy. All I had to pay was- WOW! Now I don't know which developer had the brain aneurysm, but someone did. Fans were not happy, and seeing this just confirmed to me that the game wasn't in the right hands. It was in the hands of a studio that didn't deserve it or $500. So ultimately we come to December 10th, 2019, where Piranha Games release a fully-fledged game, MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries. How original. But honestly, it piqued my interest. It had a campaign and other modes that seemed great, the initial reviews were solid, but then I saw a red flag. I watched the intro movie to the game on YouTube. Everyone who's an old school fan knows, this intro wasn't what we were expecting. An intro to a MechWarrior game is a specific thing. It shows warfare. It also sets the tone, tells a story, and shows the kind of world you're in for. And it's always awesome. This is not that. This screams laziness to me. They're using Unreal Engine 4. They could have easily crafted an intro video similar to all the previous ones. You don't need expensive CGI or any sort of enormous budget to make something look like the old games, especially with 2019 graphics. Still, I held out hope. Maybe the game and story itself was better. It wasn't. <laughs> So let's talk story. It's absurdly bad and the voice acting is no better. At the end of the first level, you sit through this gut-wrenching, heart-pounding scene where your dad sacrifices his life for you. See how emotional that was? It was. And from there, nothing ever gets better. At least a family member died, continuing that tradition. Now, I won't sit here and say MacWarrior games have been known for their amazing stories, but what they've always done well is how good the storytelling is. They have always done an incredible job of setting the tone, showing the atmosphere of this world you're in, having levels with stakes and danger, and making sure that you as the gamer feel like you are really in this world. There's still room in hell for your sorry carcass. MacWarrior 5 does not feel like any of this. So why is it still being played and updated? It's because of the community that this game is still alive, specifically the modding community. Now there is news of the future, where Piranha is making a sixth game in the series to be released in 2024. Am I happy? No. I would honestly want someone at Zipper or FASA Interactive to make the next game rather than Piranha. And yes, I know what I just said. Ultimately, MechWarrior used to mean something. Something more than it does today. When I see the very deserved hype around Armor Core 6 releasing, I want that for MechWarrior 6. But seeing who is making the game, I know that's something that's not going to happen. It is not the franchise it once was, and I don't know if it ever will be again. And on that happy note, thank you all for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Piloting these awesome weapons of war are men and women, the elite of the elite, knowing that each battle could be their last. They are mech warriors.